Well, verse 20. Verse 21. But for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world uh -huh. to the time, no, nor ever shall be. The Jew, the first Jewish Roman wars, where right. people were eating their children, things of that nature. Right. But what about verse 22? I said 21 and 22. Okay, go ahead. And except those days should be shortened, uh -huh. there shall no flesh be saved. Mm -hmm. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Uh huh. The war was cut short. Let's go to Daniel 9 where he's quoting about the abomination and desolation. Right? Go ahead. It's the book you got it? Yeah. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 9. We're going to start at verse 24. Uh huh. And it says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people. This is the first thing we have to understand. <laughs> 70 weeks. So we got a timeline of 70 weeks. Go ahead. And upon the holy city to finish the transgression. Right, so it's very clear. Upon the holy city, upon Jerusalem, you the city in, itself. Daniel what? Daniel 9. All right, go ahead. Huh. And it said, to finish the transgression and to make an end of sin. Uh-huh. And to make reconciliation for iniquity. Which is what the sacrifice of Christ is about. Right. Reconciliation of iniquity through the shedding of his blood. All right, go ahead. And to bring an everlasting, so like an everlasting righteousness, uh -huh. and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Uh huh. Go ahead. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem mm -hmm. unto the Messiah, the Prince. So this is important. From the going forth of the commandment to rebuild Jerusalem. When you study in the history, you read in the books like Ezra and Nehemiah. Nehemiah yeah. They come out of Babylon and there was an initial decree to rebuild the temple. Then there was a secondary decree to build the city that came later. Right? Go ahead. Uh, and it said, the Messiah, the Prince, shall be 70 weeks and three score and two weeks the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times three score and two weeks the 62 weeks in which the temple was being built during the time you was attacked we read about in ezra that men had to literally be armed and hold their arm they, they sword with one hand and build with the other hand right because they were trying to 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 stop our enterprise and rebuilding our city right go ahead uh -huh. Verse 26, uh -huh. and after three score and two weeks shall uh -huh. the Messiah be cut off. That's important. The Messiah is going to be cut off. So we're talking about the crucifixion, right? This is happening in seven weeks. Go ahead. But not for himself and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Uh -huh. And to the end thereof shall be with a flood. Uh -huh. And until the end of the war, desolations are determined. Right. So there's a war. So he's going to be crucified then the city is going to be destroyed through a war. So this is all talking about a relative time period of 70 weeks. Going back about 470 years before what? The Jewish Roman War. Right. right. So the timeline is telling you when that is. That This happened about 2,000 years ago. Go ahead. Come on. Verse 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for uh -huh. one week. Right. Confirming the covenant with many is the curse of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, the covenant that we entered into with God. We fell under them during the time of the Jewish Roman Wars. Right. Go ahead. And in the midst of the week. In the middle of the week. In the midst of the week. Right. So the war happened from 66 to 73. The middle of that week is 70 AD. Right. In the middle of the week. Go ahead. In the middle of that week. In the midst of the week. He shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. Why was the sacrifice and oblation caused to cease? Because the temple was destroyed. Right. So now when the temple gets destroyed, you can't sacrifice. You right. can't make oblation because right. the place that you have to do it at no longer exists. Right. It's been brought down. Jesus said that this place, he said not, not even the buildings are going to be standing around here. He said that during not one stone of the buildings is going to be standing right here by the temple. Right. So what, it, what it's talking about, that great tribulation, was talking about the Jewish Roman War. Not even the buildings are going to be standing around here. He said that during not one stone of the buildings is going to be standing right here by the temple. So what it what it's talking about that great tribulation was talking about the Jewish Roman War. Not even the buildings are going to be standing around here. He said that during not one stone of the buildings is going to be standing right here by the temple. So what it what it's talking about that great tribulation was talking about the Jewish Roman War. Thank you. 29 where it talks about the sun and moon being dark so then here's my next question 
is Matthew 24 and 29 talking about a future return of Christ or is it discussing the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD? You said Matthew 24 and 29? Yes. Is that speaking about the destruction of Jerusalem or is it talking about a future coming of the Lord? Um, hey. Yeah, I wouldn't. If you're gonna try, if you're gonna pair that up with twenty nine and thirty, then I would say no. We didn't see all the earths, all the tribes of the earth mourn. Um, we didn't yeah, see. Let's let, let's read this. Let's read this real quick. Um, okay. Uh, uh, uh. Anyway. Okay, so start at 23, right? Let's we'll start at 23. Uh, then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall shoot great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, mm -hmm. they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in secret chamber, Believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and the shining even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So he's explaining his return as a global event that everyone is going to see his return. In, now, which my is question works against you. Verse 20, I'm, I'm reading into 29. All right. For wheresoever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together immediately after the tribulation of those days. Shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and shall all the tribes are... Yeah, this certainly is not talking about 70 AD, not even close. Okay, all right. Fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and shall all the tribes are... Yeah, this certainly is not talking about 70 AD, not even close. Okay. All right. Thank you. Now, so then this is a future coming of the Lord. This is the end time coming of the Lord, according to your view, correct? Yeah. Okay. All right. So now um, he states that this would take place um, in connection with all those verses that you just read. And so you asserted that it is the is a future coming of the Lord. And if it is a future coming of the Lord, then it would be Zechariah chapter 14. Uh, those verses starting from verse four and five. We got some more stuff to cover. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh man. I see, I was watching a video the other day that was put up on the Sakari page, right? You know, if you go on YouTube, look up the term Sakari, you're gonna find like their main uh, page, right? Um, and they were having a conversation with this one dude. And, um, you know, the guy was asking it, you know, multiple questions, but the topic of the great tribulation came up, you know? And, and again, I give Sakari credit, but I also discredit them. You know, they're very smart guys, but then they go off on certain topics. You know, you ever heard a phrase called, um, you know, take the meat and leave the bone? This will be a good time to put that into effect. You know, I'll give Sakura credit. They say a lot of things that's absolutely right. But then they also say things that are clearly incorrect. You know, so, um, you know, when they get something right, you give them credit. When they get something wrong, you, you know, try to correct them on that. Um, you know, but I couldn't believe this. I was like so amazed when I heard and make this statement, which I'll, you know, I won't make you wonder for much longer. I'll explain what it is. Um, so they were having this conversation with this this guy, right? And, uh, you know, the topic of the Great Tribulation came up right from Matthew 24. And Gorilla said that that was talking about, like, the, um, you know, the 70 AD, right? When the Romans were fighting against the Jews, right? For the few years that that war was going on. Um, you know, in that whole time, you know, for this handful of years that the, you know, the Jews and the Romans were at war around 70 AD, that was actually the Great Tribulation. And when I heard that, I was like, I had to replay that video a couple of times. I was like, wait a second, what? Wait, what? These guys said the Great Tribulation happened in 
you know, 70 AD. I know they're not full preterists because they've, I've seen their debates with, uh, you know, full preterists before, and they don't hold that position, right? Um, which is, uh, this is very weird. So apparently, you know, they must be changing the doctrine of Rasan because just say five years ago, those guys were teaching that the Great Tribulation happens in the end time. But now apparently the Great Tribulation happened in the like the first century, right? Happened in like 70 AD around that time period. So let me read the verse that was in question. Uh, Matthew 24, verse 21 and 22 says, um, For then shall be great tribulation, which was, such was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor shall it ever be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days they will be shortened. Right, so by reading that, it's like, wait a second. So if you guys are saying, by logic, if the great tribulation already took place, in 70 AD, doesn't that mean that God's elect are taken away already then? Like, like say, for example, the rapture, right? Or the gathering together of the elect. Wouldn't that mean that already took place in 70 AD? Because it says that God's going to shorten those days for the elect's sake. I'll read verse 22 again. It says, and except those days, what days are that? That's the days of the great tribulation. But except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, God will shorten those days. Right, so the Bible says that the days of the Great Tribulation, God's going to shorten those times for his elect's sake. Why? Because, well, the elect are going to be on the earth during the Great Tribulation, contrary to popular belief. You know, because a lot of people out here, you know, and again, as I said, I've been around the block for years and years, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I've seen cats, you know, help say eight years ago talking about there's going to be a rapture right any day now there's going to be a rapture and yet here they are eight years later still talking about the same bullshit saying that there's going to be a rapture any day now it's like dude haven't you been saying that for the last seven eight years man and every date that you guys pick literally is wrong every year or every month because you know there's one dude in the comic board that i seen which i won't go too far off on him but um you know, the dude would literally come out every single month and say, you know, I did some calculations and the rapture is going to happen on this day or that day. And then when that day doesn't happen, I will come back the next month and say, well, actually, it's this month on this other day. And then he'll literally come back, keep coming back at month after month after month and say a new day. It's like, dude, don't you guys get tired of this? At times, it's like, don't you get tired out? after picking all these dates after you know two years and you never get it right it's like i mean shit even christ himself said he doesn't know the day or the hour this is gonna he's gonna return so how the hell do you know that right like, like how the hell does that make sense like how the hell does still small voice right flair look her up how the hell does she know that the rapture is gonna be you know on this or that date if even the christ himself said that he doesn't even know what it's gonna be you know, it's like you would imagine people would have the decency and the smarts in their brain to be able to figure out, it's like, wait a second, you know, if the Messiah himself, he said it, he doesn't even know when he is returning. Well, how could me, how could I know what day he's going to return? <laughs> oh, and Lester Perry, right? Because apparently Perry Green, he said he's equal with Jesus Christ. Wait a second, if you're equal with Jesus Christ, wait. Aren't you saying you're equal of God then? Because, Perry, you said that Jesus Christ is the supreme God, right? So you're essentially saying you're equal of God. I mean, are you not saying that because you say that Jesus Christ is God? So, I mean, apparently, Perry Green saying he's equal with the Father. So doesn't that mean you should know when he's coming, coming back in? Doesn't that mean you should know the day and the hour then, Perry, according to your logic? You know, so it's just amazing to me. Um, let me see. You know, but there is clearly a flaw with this teaching that Sakari has. And I was watching the debate that they had with Pastor William Bell, and there was a point when this chapter was brought up, and Deacon said, you know, you know, oh, yeah, these verses, you know, they haven't happened yet, right? They're certainly going to happen 
in the end times. You know, they didn't already happen. So now apparently they're saying it did already happen. And let me let me bring this up. Bear with me a second. Okay. Remember, they said that the tribulation already happened in the first century, right? Happened in 70 AD. But then Deacon said that what I'm going to read you here, this hasn't happened yet. So, I mean, there clearly seems to be a, a contradiction. Uh, Matthew 24, I'm going to start at 29. We'll read down to 33. It says, um, immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now let me, let me go down a little bit. Okay, um, this is from one end of the heaven to the other. Now learn the parable of the fig tree. When its branch is yet tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. But likewise ye, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Right, so again, there's, there's a big contradiction here because if Rilla is saying that the Great Tribulation already happened in 70 AD, but yet Deacon said, just going up to verse 29 to verse 33, that's going to happen in the future. But wait a second, there's a big problem because it says that God was going to shorten the days of the tribulation for God's like sake. But yet we see in verse 29 on down, the which again, they agreed it's in the end times, right? So a different event from 70 AD, of course, 2000 some years later now. But here it's saying that Christ is going to return. He's going to send his angels to save his elect for you know, wherever they're scattered around the world. Well, wait a second. How the hell is he going to send his angels to gather together the elect if apparently the elect were saved back then because that was the Great Tribulation? And it says right here in um, verse 22, yeah, verse, I'll, I'll even read 21 again, Matthew 24, verse 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not sent to be doing for the world to this time. Well, no, well, no will it ever be like this. It says, and except those days shall be short, and there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days they will be short. Right. So if the Great Tribulation already happened in 70 AD, well, wait, what about the elect? Doesn't that mean God's elect already were taken away then, back then? I mean, I don't I don't see how you can get around this. Now, I want to point this out as well. Um, were people back then in 70 AD, were they going through a tribulation? Yes. Were people living in World War I or World War II going through a tribulation? Yes. Were people living through the Great Depression in the 30s going through a tribulation? Yes. Because the word tribulation, bear with me a second, the word tribulation, it simply can mean a hardship, right? Like, I'll give an example. I quoted this one earlier on stream, man. Um, John uh, 16, verse 33, Christ said to me, you're going to have peace, but in the world, you're going to have tribulation. Right, so the word tribulation, it can means a hardship. It doesn't mean every time you see in the Bible the word tribulation, it's not always referring to the end times. However, when we see, say, great tribulation, we know what's talking about the end times. So again, I had to clarify that. Were people living in 70 AD going through a tribulation? Absolutely. But was it the great tribulation? Absolutely not. You know, so again, it's amazing to me because they said the great tribulation was 70 AD, right? When the Romans under uh, Titus um, sacked Jerusalem, right? That was a great tribulation. But don't you, don't you guys teach the end times are still in the future then? So wait, if the Great Tribulation already happened, well, why is it saying in Matthew 24, we'll just go over a little bit. Um, 
I'll go to verse 29 again. It says immediately after the tribulation of those days. Right, so what tribulation is it going to be in those days? Is, is this also talking about 70 AD? Because Deacon said on his discussion he had with Pastor William Bell, he said that this certainly hasn't happened. Again, you can find a clip yourself. I watched the video eight times because I thought it was a very good conversation, which again, got to give Sakari credit. You know, they clearly cut those guys up and had to pay. But nevertheless, I remember Deacon said about this particular verse on down, Matthew 24, 29, to say verse uh, 33, he said, this certainly has not happened. But now Gorilla is saying that the Great Tribulation already happened. So, I mean, either these guys didn't talk this out yet, or there's a contradiction, or they're changing the doctrine. I don't know. That's for them to decide. I'm just simply saying that I watched one of their videos recently. And this is what they were talking about, that, you know, the Great Tribulation in Matthew 24, 21 and 22, that already happened in 70 AD with the uh, the few years that the, you know, Romans and the Jews were at war. That's what they said. And that's clearly not true. That's clearly not what it's talking about. Because, again, if you're going to claim that verse 21 is 70 AD, by logic, you must also conclude the next verse is 70 AD because it's literally a continuation of the previous verse. So again, you must, by logic, say that the elect were saved in 70 AD. Then. But wait, if the elect were saved, well, how are the elect still on earth in the end days then? If we see Christ sending his angels to save his elect in the end days, just like I just read here in Matthew 24, 29. And of course, which I won't get it for the sake of time, but of course, Revelation say the seventh chapter and what is it the 21st chapter or the 20th chapter you see all these references to the elect in the book revelation right so clearly they're on earth in the end times right but wait if they're on earth in the end times how do you guys get around verse 22 in matthew 24 where it says that you know going by the great tribulation the elect, for their sake god will shorten the days right so those days, what are those days? The days of the Great Tribulation. So if you're saying the Great Tribulation happened in 70 AD, well, those days were shortened for God's elect's sake. So by that logic, you must say the elect were saved in 70 AD. So God's elect couldn't be on earth right now because they'd be with Christ or whatever. You know, and again, I, I'm very intrigued to see how they can get around this because, I mean, this is a clear contradiction. And again, I'm not making this up, you know, I, I wouldn't, you know, lie on some of them. I mean, I re literally watched the conversation I had with this guy on their main channel, and they told him, yeah, you know, the Great Tribulation, that already happened in 70 AD. And again, when I heard that, I was like, what the hell? What the hell are these guys talking about? You know, it's ridiculous. Uh, let's see. Bear with me a second. <laughs> Dustin Reed said it's happening soon. Yeah, it is happening soon. Now, nobody knows that day or that hour it's going to happen, of course, but we know by the signs. We even, um, I just read the verse a little earlier. It said, you know, Neil paraphrasing, I don't have, well, have it in front of me, but it said, you know, taking these parables into consideration, you know, you'll know that. Uh, matter of fact, let me even get that real quick. I won't butcher it. I'll say it directly from the text. Give me a second. Just one second. Okay. It says, um, now learn the parable of the fig tree. When its branches get tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise, ye, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Right, so we're seeing all of the signs that Christ warned about would be happening on the earth, you know, in the end times, man. You know, wars and rumors of wars, you know, the pestilences, you know, the riots taking place, you know, uncertainty among the people. You know, it's certain that we're living in the end times now. This, this didn't already happen. I mean, that's ridiculous. You know, it's ridiculous to believe that the end times already happened. But people really believe that, you know, people really believe I mean, I've had conversations 
with literally like what 15 people over the last two years who believe that the end times already took place and uh you know we're living in eternity right now you know again i find it astounding and amazing to me you know how uh, ridiculous and how foolish that sounds but uh you know that's what people believe out here man you know scripture spoke about that uh, in the end times you know you have morons out here man right people deceiving and being deceived you know it's very easy to see to deceive in a simp you know a simp out here very easy to deceive a simp we got a drink real quick A family said, is he asking people to click the link today? Um, yes. Um, when I'm done with my little presentation I have in front of me, I'm going.